finding the least squared solution of A axis B is not so hard if the columns of A are already nicely orthogonal to each other. In that case, we can compute B hat directly and X hat in the next step. In general, however, the columns of A are not orthogonal, which means that we would need to do the gram speed process first in order to be able to compute B hat. Fortunately, there's also an other method to find the least square solution x hat. This method uses the so-called normal equations for x hat. In this video, you will learn what these normal equations are, why they work, and how you can find them. So, what's our least squares problem? We have e a hat a times x hat equals b hat where A is a matrix with two columns. Again, it doesn't matter if A has more columns, then you have the same principle. We have our Z equals B minus B hat, and we know that Z is orthogonal to A1 and A2. That's the input we use, and we want to find eventually X hat. Problem is, here X hat and B hat are known, and here Z and B hat are unknown. So you until now, we have no equation where only one unknown is present. So, what are we going to do? Well, let us write W equals the column space of A. And then we know since B hat equals A times X hat, that B hat is in the column space of A, since a linear combination of the columns of A, which equals W. Furthermore, if we... Uh, demand Z to be orthogonal to both A1 and A2, we know that Z is orthogonal to any linear combination of A1 and A2, which means that Z is orthogonal to W, which means that Z is in W perp, Z is in the orthoplement of W. So we have a B hat and W, uh, Z and W perp, we have, according to equation 2, B equals B hat plus Z. So in this way, we decompose our vector B in a vector in W and in a vector Z orthogonal to W. So if we have those three restrictions, we have our decomposition. But how can we find X hat using this decomposition? Well, we know that both A1 and A2 are orthogonal to Z, which means that the inner product with Z has to be equal to zero. We also know that we can write an inner product as a matrix equation. Well, a very small matrix equation. A1 inner product z equals 0 translates into the matrix equation. A1 transpose times z equals 0, and similarly for A2. And we can put those in a matrix. A1 and A2 in a matrix times z equals 0 factor. But then we have over here a matrix with as rows A1 and A2. That means that this is the matrix A with the uh, rows instead of columns, so the A transpose set has to be equal to zero. So now we are basically done. We only have an equation now where Z is present, so we can solve for Z, and if we have Z, we can go on. But it's nice to rework this a bit and to get an equation where only X hat is present, because that's our final goal. Well, that's no problem. We write z equals b minus b hat equals zero. Then we have an equation where we know a and b, and b hat is the only unknown. So with this equation we could in principle compute b hat, but we want x hat. No problem, we know b hat equals a times x hat. So now we have equa an equation where only a is present, and where only the factor b is present. Usually you work out the brackets and rewrite this equation a bit, so we write a transpose times b minus a transpose a times x hat equals zero. And usually you put uh, this term to the right hand side. And you finally obtain a transpose times a times x hat equals a time transpose times b. So we have an equation where only x hat is present. And this equation yields some linear equations, which are called the normal equations, which will allow us to find x hat 